And what I'm about to show is actually my favorite application. This is going to be X-Shape, which is the subdivisional modeler. And this is really an area where, um, where these X apps actually have a leg up on, on SolidWorks. I hate to admit it, I've been a SolidWorks user for 10 years, but you know what, it's actually true. The sub-D modeling is pretty fun. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Uh, what we're going to do is actually switch into our X-Shape application. So we'll go ahead and make that switch real quickly. Once again, I'm keeping all this real. Uh, that was a real time type of switch. So that was what, like two seconds? Not really a, a whole lot of lag here, as you can hopefully see. And what we're interested in doing is, is creating the base for this monitor stand. You can see how we've got a little bit of help from our graphic design team. They've actually added in some sketch pictures. So <laughs> you can use sketch pictures in, in any of these X apps as well you're used to doing that in SolidWorks. And we'll go ahead and we'll, <clears throat> we'll actually create a, uh, a subdivisional model um, that I've already have dropped into the assembly here, but this is gonna be to cover up this, this monitor stand base. Um, so here we have, uh, the subdivision tabs are a little bit different than anything maybe that you've seen in the past. If you're really interested in X shape, I actually have made some other webinars in the past that really go into more detail about what you can do with the software. Uh, so definitely check those out or, or reach out if you're curious about getting more info on that. But basically you start off with dropping in what we call a primitive, which is just a, a shape that's been subdivided already. So we can drop these in, we can control how many subdivisions are actually present we can kind of rotate around here uh, and we can even scale this before we actually confirm the drop of, of this primitive shape. So we can scale this up or down or however large we actually want this to appear. So I'll pop it in somewhere maybe in that range right here. And we could probably shrink this guy down a little bit too uh, just by pushing and pulling on these arrows. So this happens pretty smooth um, and by the way, you might look at this and, and think, man, I wonder what the learning curve is on this particular app. I would say this, this application is so intuitive that you could probably learn to, to use it effectively in, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple of days. Like it's, it's that intuitive. With a little bit of training, like you're, you're up and running really quickly. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna push and pull this to where it matches our sketch pictures that our graphic design team gave us. But one of the things that I might wanna do is turn symmetry on. So if I wanna be symmetrical about a particular plane, well, I can turn that on and then any of the stuff that I move on one side of that plane is also going to move on the other side. So it makes it super easy to, to maintain those symmetrical types of designs. And then from there, I just select these points or faces or vertices whatever have you, and I just push and pull them into position. So it's like, you can't get much easier than this. I just, that's why I said at the beginning of this that I, I really like this tool, because it's just, it's actually fun to, to kind of do work in here. Oh, I flipped around the, uh, the incorrect way here. Sorry, guys. Get into a better orientation. Now, by default, all of these faces, and edges are uh, C2 continuous. So this is great for any type of consumer product design that you might uh, want to be doing. But in the event that you need to crease those edges and make them to where it's a hard edge, you can do that as well, just like I did here. So that works out pretty nicely. Um, you notice that we added and controlled the amount of subdivision faces whenever we were working with this. You can also remove that as you're working. So I can come in and, and delete any of those faces or, or edges kind of as needed. Now for this top portion here, what we want to do is actually control how those are angled. And one of the cool ways you can do that is by using this align by line. So you can select all those edges and then they're all going to kind of line up with one another and you can push and pull uh, as needed to get them into the proper location. So I think this looks pretty good here. Maybe we'll leave that alone. Kind of re-examine things, make sure it looks pretty good. All right, cool. Now, if you're gonna do any type of injection molding, you're probably aware that making sure you have draft on your components is very, very important. And you can see here, we can quickly turn on draft analysis 
to where we can come in and move any of these faces to where we can modify that and see the results in real time. So we're getting rid of that, those undercuts that are right there. Uh, and we can see the results in real time. Making sure that this is actually something we can manufacture with the particular injection molding process that we have. So pretty, pretty first class right there, if you ask me. All right, so this is looking pretty good here. What uh, We've got another primitive that we need to drop in here, just another shape that's going to be that little kind of bulge that's, that's sitting right there. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my subdivision, and we're going to drop in another, uh, another cylinder here. So I'll place this one kind of as shown. Maybe we'll cut down on the amount of cylindrical subdivisional faces we have, and we'll shrink this thing down a little bit. All right, so that looks pretty good. Uh, to get a little bit more clarity, we can actually come back and, and hide the previous subdivision surface that we worked with. That way we can, we can see things a bit more clearly. And up until now, all that we've done is we've kind of pushed and pulled stuff until it's approximately at the correct location. And you may be wondering, well, you know, my process is that I follow. I actually need to be really, I need to be really precise. You know, I'm a precise guy or a precise kind of girl. Uh, well, what you can do here is you can actually be very precise with this tool if you need to. So I can come in and scale by a particular dimension. I can say, hey, I want from that point to that point right here, I know that needs to be 60 millimeters across, and I can hit my scale key, and that'll pop it into that particular, um, it'll pop it into that particular dimension. So really pretty useful tool right there to be able to, to adequately uh, size things for you. I'm going to go ahead and move this up and just position it a little bit more. I think that looks pretty good though. So we'll go ahead and we'll hop out of that subdivision um, surface that we were working with there. And right now we have two different bodies that have been created. So for those of you who are familiar with multi-body design, you can do that inside of these X apps as well. And what I'm going to do is actually flip back over into X design. And we are going to combine those. So we have the ability to do advanced types of, of features like this. I can pick on those two different bodies and just select them and say, hey, I want to add these to each other. Boom. Done. Now from there, we can doctor up this design a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and add a little fillet just to make this look a little bit nicer. And then since this is actually a, a base that's going to be covering this thing, what we need to do is shell it out. So I'll go ahead and I'll shell this thing out to a value of maybe one, turn on our tangent propagation, and click OK. And now, our design for that, for that little monitor stand base is pretty much complete. And I just want to point out the fact that we were able to make something super smooth and curvy and flowy like that uh, very, very rapidly using that X-shape tool. And that's, like I said, that's a, an area where I think we actually have a little advantage over, over SolidWorks when using these X apps. Like, check that out. That just looks really cool. And I made that in like five minutes. That can really expedite some of these design processes uh, whenever you need to leverage particular, you know, uh, continuous, smooth, and, and flowy, complex surfaces like that. 